I've marked where I want all of my eyelet or lacing holes to go. Mine are about one inch apart. You can mark them however far apart you want. You can also use a pencil or like a, one of those dissolving pens that they make for fabric. Um, I like to use pins, so I have a lot of pins. So the other thing I'm going to use is an awl. This is a tool which is not quite all the way sharp on the end, and it allows you to poke through the fibers of a fabric without actually tearing the fibers. So that way you're making a really strong hole where you're just like forcing the fibers apart. So first of all, I want to make sure that my eyelet holes are at least as close to the same distance from the edge as possible. I'm doing them about like 3 eighths of an inch here, and I'm also not being like super perfectionist about this, so if one isn't perfect, I'm not going to worry too much. I don't think it's even going to show when it's laced, but of course you can be as perfectionist as you want when you do this. So I'm going to go in where I've marked with my awl. This fabric is four layers thick, so it's actually the outer fabric, there's a lining on the back, and in between is the folded over part of those fabrics, so you got the fold in the middle, the backing, and the main fabric. I mean, in this case, it's all the main fabric, but you know, the front and the back side. So I'm just gonna poke through all four layers, some fabrics are easier to poke through than others. That's okay, you don't wanna force it, you just wanna kinda coax it through, like that. And then you wanna push it. So for this one, and actually for a lot of them, I end up sort of, let me see if you can see, I end up sort of setting it down and then like using that force to push the fabric down onto the awl a little bit. Now, if you push it a little too far and you do get a thread or two that breaks, it's not going to be the end of the world. It's obviously not ideal, but you've still got so many fibers intact in my experience. It's nothing to get upset over if that happens. So just letting you know because I know it's happened to me many times. So there's my hole punched in the fabric. Now I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to go in from the back side. Now it doesn't matter where in the hole you start because you're going to make a full circle. I usually like to start at the bottom, it's just a personal preference, it doesn't really matter. So to do the stitch, we're going to make a loop here. And this is why the pins can get in the way, because you can catch that loop on the pin. But apparently I don't mind because I still use the pins. So we're going to go down through the fabric here, right next to where we came up. And then on the back side, we're going to come up through the hole. And then as we come up and make the stitch, see it's getting hooked on the pins. Um, basically what's going on is we've got a loop and then that thread is coming up through the loop like that. This is also the same as the way most people do a buttonhole stitch. So you can use it for buttonholes too. So then I'm going to repeat, go down next to that go up through that hole on the other side and we're gonna pull it nice and tight. Now as you do this you're gonna need to poke back through with the awl because you didn't actually cut away the fibers they do tend to want to go back to where they were originally so you want to keep making it stay open basically. So we just repeat and sometimes you can just bring the needle right up through like that. If that's not possible in the stitch you're doing just go through from the back side. It's totally fine. I usually do just a couple of stitches and then put the all back through again. As a disclaimer, it's likely this one is not going to come out perfect because I'm talking while I'm doing it and I'm not that coordinated, but you're going to get an idea and you can see the ones I did when I wasn't talking for a more perfect reference if you like. 
I just switched my camera over to manual focus, so hopefully this is really focused and stays in focus, because <laughs> it was not wanting to stay in focus. So this is the same buttonhole slash eyelet hole stitch all the way around. And then once you've done that whole eyelet hole, congratulations! It's time to tie off the thread. We're just going to go back in through there and make sure we come out on the back side there where we can tie it. Once we're on the back side, we're just going to tie it off like normal. So there's the back and there's the front. We've got nice little stitches all the way around and then that little ring of thread that we created should be primarily visible on the front side of the fabric. Here you can see a few and I'm going to go ahead and show you a more zoomed out angle while I do a couple more. And then very soon I'm going to skip ahead to having them all done so you can see how it looks on the final dress. Hopefully that gives you an idea of how to make these eyelet holes. I have quite a few left to go all the way up to the top and I've already done quite a few. So I'm going to keep going and you guys can be able to see the final product with all my eyelet holes very soon. <laughs>